Hello, options traders. Welcome, everyone. In the last video, I talked about volatility risk premium. And I said that in the long run, all options have to be overpriced because they are a form of insurance. And in order to ask those sellers to kind of swim with the sharks there, they are going to command a risk premium. And I said one of the ways that you can get away from that and start getting into an option that's behaving more like shares of stock and less like an option is to move in the money. But now you're going to find that there is another potential problem. The bid-ask spread start to get wide. And so we don't want to just sell at the bid or buy at the ask. But then the question becomes, which price should you use? And to determine that, it helps to understand the bid-ask implied volatility. So let's take a look at what it means to have a bid and ask implied volatility and how to use them to make better trading decisions. If you recall in that video, I talked about an option pricing model and the Black Shoals, which is still probably the most widely used, is going to ask for these six figures right here. It's going to ask for the stock price, exercise price, time to expiration, risk-free interest rate, dividends, and then volatility. And if we give it those numbers, it's going to shoot out a price. And so if you in fact use these numbers, it would tell you that the option, the call option is theoretically worth $2.37. But whenever we do examples like this, we're always assuming that there is a single price for an option. But in the real world, we know that that's not true. In the real world of trading, we have a bid and ask price. And therefore, we're going to get two different implied volatilities. So the bid is the highest price that a trader somewhere in the world is willing to pay. And therefore, you and I know that you could sell at that price right now. The asking price is the lowest price at which some trader somewhere in the world is willing to sell. And therefore, you and I know that by looking at that asking price, that's a price at where we could buy. And in both those cases, you would have a buyer matched with a seller. So for example, let's say that we're looking at a particular option and the bid is $3 and the asking price is $3.20. Once again, what that market is showing is that somebody somewhere is posting a limit order of $3 as a bid. They are willing to pay up to and including $3, but no more. And therefore, if you wanted to sell right now, you know you could sell for three because that is a buyer at three. On the other side of the board, with the asking price at $3.20, some trader somewhere in the world is willing to sell at $3.20, but no less. They'll take more, but no less. It's a limit order. And therefore, you and I know that we could buy right now for $3.20. However, because there are two prices, you will actually have two different implied volatilities. So going back to that example, if the bid is three and the asking price is $3.20, we could go back to our Black-Scholes model and say what volatility is necessary to create a price of three. And the model might say you would need to plug in 25%. Then I could go right back to that same model, keep all the inputs exactly the same, but say, what if the price is $3.20? And the model might come back and say, well, now you'd need a volatility of 27% to generate a price of $3.20. So most of your professional platforms will show you the bid and ask implied volatilities, and there are very good reasons for doing so. And we'll take a look at some examples in just a moment. But first of all, understand that the fair value, the price at which the buyer and seller are expected to break even in the long run, generally falls right between the bid and the ask at what's called the mark or the midpoint. If you have liquid markets, you will have a very tight implied volatilities between the bid and the ask, and the fair value would be expected to lie right there in between. So when you're looking at at the money options, or maybe a strike in or out from at the money, going to have very tight bid-ask spreads and therefore the implied volatilities will be very close. But when you start going deeper in the money into less liquid markets, the fair value might lie closer to the bid or the ask. It's not necessarily going to be between. And you need to understand that to make better decisions on how to place your trades. So let's go over and take a look at some examples in the E-Trade platform. Well, right now you can see that Apple is trading for 149.80, almost 150. And let's take a look at the March expiration. 
And you can see right down here, there's 66 days until expiration. And it doesn't really matter which expiration you choose, you're going to get similar patterns. But let's first take a look at the at the money strike, which would be the 150 strike right here. And as I mentioned in a previous video, one of the ways to tell that that is priced as the at the money is that it has the highest extrinsic value. So I've got $8.20 here. If I drop down to the 145 strike, I've got 612. And if I come up to the 155, I've got 585. So we can tell that that is definitely the at the money option. And over here on the left, I've got a bid of 820 and an asking price of 830. The mark, halfway point between them is 825. So what are the implied volatilities for this bid and for this offer? We'll look all the way over here to the right. And I see the bid implied volatility is 3194. And the asking implied volatility is 3250, yeah, it's jumping around there, 3241 right now. But you can see very, very close between these. So once again, what does this mean? It means in order to generate the current bid, which is now $8.15, you'd need to put in about 32% into the pricing model. To generate the asking price, which is now $8.30, you would need to use this implied volatility of $32.54. But the main thing to see is that these are very close, well, basically 32, maybe 32 and a quarter between them. Now look directly across the board at the corresponding puts, the 150 puts. Also, almost identical implied volatilities. And this will almost always be true, unless we get what's called a put call skew, but this will almost always be true for your at the monies. Tight bid ask spreads, the implied volatilities between them will virtually be identical. So I can see that the volatility that the market is using right now for this expiration with 66 days is, let's just call it 32%. But watch what happens as I start going deeper in the money. Start moving up this way to lower strikes, and you're going to see that these implied volatilities start to increase. And there's a few reasons that that's happening. First of all, the extrinsic value is dropping. Another reason is that market makers aren't real eager, don't really have the incentive to place much more competitive spreads. Why? Not a lot of people buying and selling down here. We certainly have far more people buying, usually from a stock replacement strategy standpoint, than we would have selling. Not a whole lot of incentive to sell this option. But if somebody wants to buy, it's probably going to be a market maker on the other side of the trade. So actually, let's look down here at this one, the 95 strike. This is a good example only one contract open interest. So not a lot of activity in here. And if we look over here to the left, bid 54.90, offered at 55.80. So we've got a 90 cent spread. It's actually not that bad for this deep in the money, but still much wider than 10 or 15 cents that you're going to see for at the money. But now go back over here to the bid and ask implied volatility. We have a bid implied volatility at about 53% now, and an asking at almost 72. But look directly across the board for the corresponding put. They're priced at about 50 to 52, maybe about 51. Why is it so much tighter over here? Well, look at the spread, first of all, 15 cents to 19 cents, only four cents wide. Part of the reason is that we have a lot of people willing to buy out of the money puts for disaster insurance. We also have a lot of people willing to sell it. It's a much more active market. And we can see that over here with 281 open interest, a whole lot better than one over on the call side. So we definitely have some skew going on here. We've got a little bit of a negative skew where the lower strikes are coming in with higher volatilities. But if we look at the puts, they're priced at, let's just call it about 51%. Now come back over here to the calls. They're priced at about 52, but pretty close to the puts. But look at the asking price. 71%. See, now we're getting some insights into here. And what this tells me, most likely, is that the market makers, who are primarily in this market, again, just because there's not a lot of activity, are already short this option. And they really don't want to be sellers. They're going to charge you a premium for being a buyer. They're pumping up this extrinsic value up here. They really don't have an incentive to sell it but they do want to buy it. Their buy price is much closer to fair value. So same thing up here. If we go up to the 90 strike, look at that. 81% on the ask, 
and about 65 on the bid. So they are, even though the bid is still high, it's not as high as the asking, not anywhere near. So it tells me that they are most likely short this option. They are trying to lean towards the bid and they're much more likely to be a buyer if they price it closer to fair value. That's what they would prefer to do. But if you're trying to buy it, they're gonna charge you a really big premium, even though it's only 30 cents. But remember, you can't look at an option's value just by the price. We need to look at the volatility. So where would I place my limit order if I wanted to buy one of these? Let's go take a look at the 95 strike again. I see the bid is 54.80, the ask is 55.60. So we've got an 80 cent spread. Well, the mark is 55.20, but I know that that's probably not the fair value. So if I go over to the puts, I can see they're again priced at about 51%. They still have a four cent spread. One thing I could do is to split that put spread of four cents, make it two cents, and tack it onto my mark right here. And through a formula called put call parity, and by looking at conversions and reversals, some other mathematical formulas, that's probably where this trade would have a very good chance of getting filled. So even if we just said five cents, probably 55.30 would be a very good point at which you'd be likely to get filled. Could we try it at 55.25? Of course, I might start there, but I'm probably not going to expect to get filled. So I would try to bump it a little closer to the asking price, but without going all the way up to the asking price, because in terms of volatility, that's a very expensive price. So one of the things that will help you to make better decisions is to understand that in the markets, looking over here, we have two volatilities, and that's because we have two different prices at the bid and the ask. Those volatilities are going to be very tight around at the money, but because of skews and lack of liquidity, they will start to get wider spreads, but will also start to get skews from fair value. So hopefully that will give you some insights and help you to place your limit orders when you are buying in the money options. For those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us in the Facebook trading group Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.